Okay, so welcome to this video where we're actually going to learn how to create a full-fledged API that provides different kind of data results um, using CodeIgniter, um, Bootstrap 3.0, and um, some of PHP basic stuff. So first of all, let me show you what we are going to create. Uh, so we have a home page here, and then basically on that page, you can see we have a slider, and then we have a few destinations. And if you would look at the source code, you would find out that actually these four items here are not part of the rendered source code. They're actually loaded in via Ajax and placed here on the page. Another thing you'll find is we have a search, so we can create something like Paris, and then hit search, and we get our search results here. And then we have the RSS feed, so we click the link here, and then we get the RSS feed, and I could probably show you this in a more readable format using uh, Internet Explorer. So you see this is what an RSS feed looks like in some kind of an interface there. So you can see hot destinations, Paris, France, New York, and so forth. So this is uh, what uh, Chrome gives to us, the raw data, the raw XML data from the feed. And then, um, and then basically we have our destinations page where we can see the destination and these are rendered using CodeIgniter view system. And then we got one page and you'll probably find, see this page is a bit slower. And the reason is PHP is going to load in an XML and then place the item on the page there. Okay, this is what we're going to create. So you should basically watch the video that says how to integrate a template uh, into uh, CodeIgniter first, but basically we'll start from there. So I went ahead and downloaded this particular template, the shop homepage. We can see what the template looks like. Caught my attention because of the big slider and the four items looking like, uh, the five items looking like a product. So I think that was awesome for my destination and for my slider. So um, as you can see, it only comes with one page and uh, I've integrated this into a file here. So we have our basic code igniter uh, setup with our basic CSS setup. And then we got the shop homepage. Uh, I probably have this uh, complete here. So I just went ahead in there and started placing my slider images and resizing my images and just creating the essential HTML file. And we can preview that file in the browser. And then you can see basically this is how I started my project. This is the local API slash shop homepage. So this is the HTML page that I worked on in the very beginning uh, to create this template. So I went ahead and just kind of modified some of these things. I didn't know really where this was gonna go. And this is how I started. The next thing I, I went ahead and did is I needed to have some data. So um, I took this, uh, this link here and then the, the concept here is if you're gonna grab some data from another site, an example to make a template like this, better have some uh, of um, these uh, items being consistent, meaning you'll find always the same, a picture, a text, you know, and then you can make some of the stuff up. So I took the picture from here, and then I took the text from here on every single one of them. Now, I only needed to add a few destinations to get started, Oh, I opened this extra page there to get started. So essentially, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go and once we have set up our template here, we're basically ready to start adding our data in the database. So um, sorry about that. So let's go to our local host and then um, let's use the SQL here. And I'll just leave it on the screen for a second. You can pause. So basically it creates a table with some fields and just adds uh, basically four or five destination. I think it's four. I'm just gonna run that as an SQL script. So this actually shows you as well how you can export your database and uh, re-import it into another system. So you can see I have a few destinations now that are added. So um, pretty much the first part of this project is to create the very similar components that you would find in the tutorial sections of 
uh, the demo. So if we go and look at the home page of the project now, um, so let me let me put this one first here. So you can see this is just the basic setup showing us that code igniter works, and then essentially we want to add the word destination, T I O N destinations to the URL, and then get that. Uh, to display a, an HTML rendered view of our destination. Okay, so the way we do this in Code Igniter is through controllers. So now, in order for me to get my controller detected by Code Igniter, I need to have an HD access file. And the reason why it wasn't uploaded is so that we can see the HTML file that was right here as I was working on my HTML file. Uh, it was locating the CSS, the fonts, and everything. Now, once I upload this, I won't be able to access the basic HTML file that I used to create my UI. So now I'm going to upload my HD access, and I can see now that Code Igniter is going to respond now to this, not a server error. So it still says that the page wasn't being able to be found. Actually, I can close this now that we're done. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go here inside our controller, locate destinations, and then we're just going to create a basic function index because we know that this is the function that gets called when we write no specific function after the controller. So um, then we, what I did is I split up the template just like the demo so we can easily say this dot load and then example we can start with the helper I know many of you forget this often to load the URL helper and then basically this dot load view and then we can load something like templates slash header and then uh, we'll probably need to give it some data and then we can keep going with this uh, and then actually only one maybe for the footer okay so this should give us a basic page layout if we go inside our views here we can see uh, in the templates we have the header and so I have no specific PHP in here so I don't even need really the data but it's just for precaution I get used to passing it and same thing you see here I don't have anything specific in the footer they are just the broken down pieces of the template uh, leaving us with the middle to play with so um, right now what we're going to do is just create that data variable uh, just so it's not necessarily empty and we can basically put it as an array or um, the way that Code Igniter does it is, it is it's a self-declarative array, so something like title is equal to, and that would be good enough to give it a value. Okay, so I can upload the destination file and check this again, and so you can see my header and my footer. So uh, now if I wanted to load something in the middle, I would need to investigate which actual middle part was I using. Okay, so if I go back into my original HTML, I could see that this selected part here, or basically even the row itself, first product, you can see this is actually the destination. Okay, so if I take this div row with a class inside and uh, I create a destination, this is basically what I've done, and I've pasted it here. Um, and so now if I go to my controller and just load this particular view that I've created I can say load destination okay so quite simply I'll have one item on my page and this is uh, from the HTML so there's nothing special that's loaded there it's just to show you that through a view I can do this now Here's where I've added some of my own little flavor to this. I said to myself, you know, I'm going to have to generate a lot of this HTML that looks exactly like this. So I was ingenious and I tried to find different ways that I could manipulate the system in order to be, um, you know, very unique and at the same time very clean. 
So what I ended up doing is converting this to some kind of a template. So I took this item here, and then inside my templates folder, I created a singular destination.php. And then here, basically what I did is just as a regular view would have, and this is where I made something pretty interesting, is I use this particular syntax. So um, this is a PHP syntax that allows us to echo at the same time. And then example, we don't even need to close because it's only one thing. So that's actually very useful to use this syntax because we can convert um, a lot of the uh, templating function of the JavaScript underscore framework to be able to detect this particular kind of code. Okay, so if I go ahead now and just keep filling these up, I can see I'll have my uh, thumbnail here. It's actually singular one thumbnail. Uh, right here, I'll have my price, and you can see I leave the dollar sign in front of it. So price, and here I'll have the city, and these are like just basically PHP variables. Inside of the p tag, I'm going to have the short description and then uh, here I have ratings so I'll just uh, put the field reviews and now here is one of my first problem is that I have four stars okay and to make a star look like it's given a rating you basically leave it there so that's a full star and to turn this star into an empty star you have to append empty to it. That's how the, the uh, framework works. So that's bootstrap there. The glyph icon star empty is basically a different version of the star that looks empty. I can show you in the original here that there are some stars empty for New York having a rating of three out of five. Okay. So the way that I did this was that I said to myself, well, if I wanted to keep this linear and I wanted to create what we call a template that has no logic, because actually the underscore templates, they support logic, meaning I could have had a loop and just loop over these, but there's only five stars. So I said to myself, why not just create um, rating one, two, three, four, five, just like that. And if I leave those variables empty, the rating is given. And I, if I leave those variables with the dash empty in it, well, basically, I can control how the stars are going to look. So it's a very simple approach here to creating the template. And you'll see how many times we'll get to reuse this particular portion. Having control over the size will allow us to fit different column scenario, as you have seen in the original here. Uh, on our home page, oh, sorry about this. So if I go to, uh, that's not the right one. Okay, there we go. So if I go to the home page here, you can see it's a three column layout. So to, to put three side by side, they have to be four, four, four. But in order to put four side by side, one, two, three, four, they need to be grid three, 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 three. You get my point? So the way I control this, is with the size okay so this the size is something I'll be adding to the data as I want to use it okay so now I can load this as a view I can load this uh, with many different ways and um, and you'll see how fun it is to use this so that's one of my little uh, spices there that I decided to add to this you'll see how flexible I can reuse this component that I've made there um, so I can uh, close this now and this is how the actual view will look like because now that we have this as a template I mean all we need to do now is figure out how many stars we need so in the middle here what we're going to do is we're going to actually load uh, the view that creates this so uh, we create a PHP block okay and we want to create many of these, right? So we'll be getting the results uh, in a for each. So for each. 
And then uh, I like to call my variable results. And uh, the only reason why I call it results is so that I don't have to change anything from the JSON collection that I've created in the utility that I've shared with you guys to get started. So uh, basically I'll call the same results for this and then as item. Now if you have followed the Code Igniter tutorial, you'll find that they use news underscore item. And since I changed pretty much everything from news to destination, well, I thought to myself, if I ever wanted to reuse this, uh, I wouldn't want to have to rechange it to whatever new entity this would be. So I just said, let's cut the news and let's just call it item. So for each result as an item, basically, uh, I want to loop over each of these. So end for each. Okay. And so now what we're going to do here is we're simply going to extract the item. Now this is basically cool because it's a PHP function that takes the array. Okay. So you know that you receive something like um, item and then something like city because that's what's in my database, right? So how can I take this and convert it to this? So I use extract. So example, before extract, city doesn't exist. It's inside an array for items. If I extract item, then basically now I have a variable called city. So I use this just before deciding to include my template slash destination dot PHP, which is my singular view that I've created. So basically now you can imagine the item looping many times looking at this particular destination and now size city and all these things do exist. You see what I mean? The only thing that doesn't exist in my array, if you remember correctly, is things like rating one. Because what's in our database, if we go and look at the database here, is a rating one, two, three, four, five. Okay? So the way I handled this was with a simple for loop. So I said if I loop for four times, so for dollar sign i is equal to zero until i is smaller or equal to five. Actually, I, I think about it, that would be six. So I actually need to start at one and then i plus plus. So now this is going to create a loop that loops exactly four times and i is not going to be zero the first time. i is going to be one, two, three, four, five. And so what I can say is if the actual rating that I've received from my item, so item rating. So if this rating is smaller or equal to the I, so the first time when it's like, let's say uh, we have to imagine a rating. Let's say the rating is five. Is five smaller or equal to one? No. So then we put item, actually if I is smaller or equal to, it's actually it should be I, my logic, the way I actually just said this, it sounded weird <coughs> because I actually think that I want to compare I. So if one is smaller than let's say five, right? So it meaning that the rating is actually good. So I would say that inside the item, I want to dynamically create a new variable called rating. And then I'll add to rating one, rating one. And then I'll set its value to an empty string because let's say the rating is higher than uh, one. So in the other scenario, basically, whereas you suddenly the rating would be, let's say three and I would be four, then it would be else. So I add empty. So that basically now when I expand this item variable, I'll have rating one, two, three, four, five. And if my rating was three, I'll have 
two la la the two last variables with the value dash empty and if not rating one two and three are going to have an empty string okay so which means it's going to create the look that I want for my stars and this is the only logic I'll need to create before I extract my item and decide to include it right there so that's my view now if I decide to upload this what I need to do now is to look at how we're actually going to get our data so we do that through a model and I followed the basically the tutorial and when you load your database and you say I want to get the destinations basically it returns every single destination uh, I thought at the beginning to create a limit example if I wanted to like only load a certain amount of destination I could do this by saying um, I think it's this I, I could be wrong here but DB and then something like limit or actually no you know what there's a really a quick way to do this if you read about the get uh, there's a second parameter there that's the limit okay so you could say 10 for instance and um, what did I do wrong now okay there wasn't no error the error was stuck there okay so uh, basically we can allow uh, the destination to just send us pretty much everything uh, and then I'll show you where I got this get stuff so it's in the um, Query builder class reference. So uh, where is it? Download form HTML language path string text URL database class, and then connecting to database query helper functions. So insert ID affected rows version last query insert string update string. Uh, there's something missing. So let's go back here. Um, running queries generating query result it's probably this one so result result array row okay so these are the results so one more time we need to actually be running queries so simple query okay so these are actual textual these are actual textual queries like select star from so where is is it an active record there we go so selecting data so we see get and you can see here the second and third parameter enables you to set a limit and offset clause so to get my table for instance destination and limit it to 10 records I can send it exactly the parameter okay so um, now I know that I could probably put an if around it I just don't want to break the code yet but you could see that's where you would do it you could put an if around it or you could try with the false I just want to make this short so I'm not going to do it now um, so we know that to get our destination we need to load the results so we go data results is equal to and then to get our data in the controller we need to create a function essentially that is our constructor and then basically when we create the constructor we need to call the parent underscore construct that's just the nature of PHP C O N S construct and then this load uh, helper I load the helper here URL that's probably why I don't need to load it all the time oops RL oh, man. okay this and then load and that's the key here load model and then we want to load the particular file destinations underscore model okay and so that will give us the model to access the data and now we can reference the model here this destinations underscore model and then we can call the function inside of it get destination okay so that will give us our results and now that the results are stored within uh, the data 
we can easily load our different views and then so we can upload this and go and test our destination okay so variable size is undefined so I had set this data size uh, is equal to for example three I don't know if it's three or four I think it's four for the um, for this part here we'll try it with three one two three four okay so it happens that it's the same size as those uh, but that it's the exact same size basically so it's just because there's more space there one more that fits there so you can see now these are from the database and you can see also my ratings correspond uh, and so that was the part one out of this now basically the part two had to do with having the ability to generate JSON information so what I did is I gave you guys um, a JSON collection class okay and then basically inside of that class uh, I made a few changes you can see the headers but one of the one of the uh, that doesn't actually really uh, change the functionality it just helps make sure that the browser doesn't cache the JSON that's all um, because if it ever puts it in the cache then it's you know it's easy when you're on your desktop you could clear the cache but try telling that to a customer um, so the idea now is to say the value had a problem we needed to JSON encode the value and so that will take care of putting the strings around it and then I tried it with the flags without the flags it happens for me that in my database I'm pretty good so I could just JSON encode it and I'll be fine so that's for the JSON collection let me just upload it one last time so now it says to the JSON collection it's expecting results so function JSON and then basically I want to load the same data so I'll just copy the line that creates my results with the data inside and I just want to load the view that allows me to see it as JSON so basically the view is inside utils slash JSON collection and then we give it the data so now if we go destination slash JSON we essentially get our JSON so that's what I mean like when I said to you guys this was literally a one minute step well it's probably even shorter than that once you watch the video so now the idea is we need to create a home page and consume that information on the home page so for us to be able to create a home page obviously I followed the tutorials so I have the pages controller which is a copy from the one that you get on CodeIgniter and all we need to do is to go inside pages and create our home page so what I did is I um, I put um, what is this here uh, the sidebar there so I put some code here in the sidebar I could probably leave my form there that was uh, my form that I had designed and to get to there we need to say pages which is the controller and the function is view so if you look here pages is the controller and the function is view by default it's home so if I press enter, I could see the HTML of my design with the slider. And so that was pretty much a copy paste from that. I decided to remove the sidebar and add a form for my search instead. Okay, so let's just say we'll, we could remove the form for a minute just so we see it's really a copy paste from everything else. And then I have here the row with the portion that I'm interested in uh, to generate code before okay so this part here this here is where Ajax should add data okay so we're all clear on that so now I told you guys about this interesting tool called underscore dot JS okay and then basically if you go into this tool here you'll find the template and it's very simple to use but if you look at the syntax whereas you can create a template with some symbols and a variable um, it becomes really interesting because now you realize that you can actually compile a template 
So what I decided to do was to push the concept a bit. I said, I need a string that I can grab with a template inside. So I said to myself, why not just create something in HTML? So a script. And uh, basically the reason why a script is because this, whatever I put inside of a script, whether it be text, whether it be errors, whether it be anything, is not going to be rendered. It's never going to be shown on the page. So it's actually a good element to create these templates inside of. And so if you imagine this, I could actually take this code and put it in here. You see what I'm saying? But I would copy my code, which is not necessarily smart. I have a second problem, these PHP tags. They're in a PHP file. So instead, it's going to display errors and say, well, size doesn't exist, thumbnail doesn't exist, and so forth. So what I decided to do was I said to myself, is there a way that I could actually read the content of the file? So actually there is. PHP has a functionality where I can say echo file get contents. And then I could just basically tell it which file do I want to load. So application slash views slash templates slash destination singular dot php which is that file that I made so now if I look at this in the browser and I say example view page source you can see here look at this I have a script and then inside of it I have a div with unrendered PHP. Okay? And now all I need to do is basically tweak my underscore. So, first of all, how do we use underscore? So, I hope I actually have the JavaScript downloaded here, and then I'll show you guys how to use it. So, I have the JavaScript downloaded. Basically, you could get it off their website, put it on your JS folder. Now, the way you would use this is you would go inside your header and footer. Actually, in this case, it would be the footer. And wherever you see jQuery, basically, you could just make a copy paste and reference your underscore. Okay, so now I have underscore and I can use it. So now, if I go inside of my main.js, so that's inside my JavaScript folder. Okay, I left all the code there. I could just remove it all. So basically, when our page loads, so this is the document.ready function. Basically, what we want to do is we want to access the content of the script. So in order to do that, we need to basically tell this script that its ID is going to be equal to, um, let's say, des destination okay so uh, it's kind of a cool name because it's exactly the same um, let me see so destination and actually I I typed here and I found that there was actually a, a parameter called type and I just looked through the list and I was like huh isn't there anything that I could use that would be non-standard like text slash HTML I thought to myself so just to show that I'm breaking the standards here and because there's no such thing as a script with type text HTML but there's a script type text JavaScript so I just thought hey why not tell the people that this is a template or something anyways that was a suggestion maybe people from uh, whoever rules the internet can say hey we're gonna add type slash text HTML to the script tag but we don't need anything else to make it work. Now, if I go here and I say, let's say, alert, uh, example, um, let's actually load this content here into, um, into an actual template. So um, I'll, create, I'll create a variable here, variable markup, and then I'll just say markup is equal to and then here with, J, with jQuery or document.getElementById, I can say the element that has the ID destination 
and then dot HTML. This is equivalent to like inner HTML basically. Actually, I don't know why I created global. I really just needed locally inside this function. Variable markup is equal to get whatever you can find in this destination. And so um, if you want markup, I can alert it for you guys to show you now that with JavaScript, I can access the content of this string. And uh, if you read about underscore, basically it needs a string to create the template, right? So now the idea is that this is the default template settings. And you can see here, they shown us that we can change to like a mustache syntax, right? So that the, the variables are essentially the style around the variable would be different. So that's where I actually got my idea that I could use something like uh, the singular destination. Okay, I closed it. So if I go inside my views, template, destination, don't you recognize something here? So all I need to do is tell underscore that you know what, now you're going to actually parse templates using a different setting. Okay, and so the way I do this is I say to underscore, and, and actually you can see that I got this particular thing from here. Okay, so it's the value template settings, and then the particular thing inside is interpolate. So we can say dot interpolate. Hope I didn't make a mistake. And then basically you see that it's a regular expression where you escape you know the two symbols here because they're special characters and whatever text you find inside becomes the variable so I can just create another regular expression for you know the opening PHP symbol and then if I put a question mark I need to escape it so with a question mark and then equals to because there's an equal sign to my question mark and then the pattern I want to match inside is basically uh, all the strings either lowercase or uppercase so um, and then maybe at least one and that that's for um, that's for the pattern itself so now we can just uh, close and then the way we close in the template is we say question mark and then we use this symbol there and you can see that's uh, that's to match our particular destination. So that would be our regular expression that would match PHP style rendering. Um, so now we got our templates configured. So you understand that the way we would use this is that we would actually call our data. So let's actually look at the code that allows us to consume our AJAX information. So it's the jQuery AJAX function and then uh, a bunch of settings can be passed. So basically in that function, the first and most important setting is the actual URL where the data is located. So mine's located, and you could see this as a proof under destination slash JSON. This is where I got my data. So basically I just, just grab that path and put it as my URL. Now, my data type is JSON. So that's, I think, as of a newer P, uh, newer jQuery version we've tried here, and uh, we saw 1.9 didn't work. This is a really quick fix. I'll try to publish it as a comment or something uh, if you're using jQuery 1.9. So, um, but for now, data type JSON works well. And then we want to say when we complete the code, so when the data comes back, the function gives us our data and some status about you know our request to see if it actually worked and so um, var json is equal to data dot response json okay so this is where we'll actually get our data now we could create the html variable that we want to start building and then I, I can show you that this is actually returning something so if we go to our home page we see our alert here and if I go here and decide to show you uh, what uh, the inspector has to say oh I see unexpected token here um, 
it has to do with my uh, it has to do with my um, oh I forgot to match all possible occurrences Unexpected token. Well, well, well. We can bother with that maybe later on. I wonder why it says unexpected token. If I go to my shop homepage on, on the functioning one, I can see there's no error. Huh, interesting. So we'll have to, we'll have to, <laughs> I, didn't, I, I didn't plan on having any debugging features, but let's actually look at the data coming back. So if we look at this here and we go inside sources, we can basically select our page here, uh, which is view. And then we could see here if we go, uh, actually, no, we need the JavaScript main. Okay, so that's where we have our code right now. So if we put a line break on HTML and we refresh the page, it's going to break right there and then show us uh, the different local variables that we're getting back. And you can see here in the JSON, we have an array with four. And you can see here, uh, I, uh, I thought I had removed it from my JSON collection, but that's actually very important inside the JSON collection, I added a dollar sign in front, okay? Which, uh, which if you look at this again, uh, where's the page there? Destination slash JSON, okay? If you look at this here again, you see that the string contains a dollar sign. Now, I guess why I did this, because the actual variable that I'm using in my PHP template has a dollar sign in front of it. But it's perfectly legal to put a dollar sign in front of a variable in JavaScript, so I said, why not, right? So it's only one extra thing. So add the dollar sign and add the JSON in code, and you should be fine with modifying the JSON collection. So uh, we see we get our response back. We're just going to basically need to loop over each of the records that we get. So um, so that basically here, what we can say is, uh, you know, for, for each uh, of the records, so var i is equal to zero. And this is very common. I hope you guys are getting used to these uh, for loops and things like that. So JSON dot length, right? Because that's an array. So we can look at the length of the items coming back. And then i plus plus, we can iterate over each. And so uh, this will give us basically the code. Uh, and we'll do something similar to this. So we'll add to the HTML, okay? And then whatever the result of the template from underscore gives us. And then if you look again at the underscore, you can see how does the template work? Well, it uses the template function, so underscore dot template. And then this is the template. And then when you wanna, okay, so this is says compiled, so where does it actually give it? Okay, um, see one creates the template, but where does it give us the value? Uh, where does it give it the value? I thought I saw somewhere a second parameter, right here. Sorry, I, j I don't know, I thought I saw it, but I couldn't quite see it now. So basically the first parameter is the template string, and then the second parameter is the data that you want. And this is how it's formatted. This is a really good example, very simple. It says a string, hello, with a variable name, and then when you call it, you say name, mo, and then it says hello mo, right? So basically if I say template, this is the template, this is the data. I just need to make a match, name needs to match name. So in my case, 
I just need to give it the JSON object because in this case it's an object and the dollar signs are already assigned so I can just say markup and then uh, JSON I so that's good enough to generate the entire HTML the only problem I don't know if you remember are the little stars that are not present in the item so we can do something very very close actually probably almost like a copy paste to what we did in PHP so we could say for the star and then we could start at one I somebody would say why are you, are you not using I because we're already inside a loop if we start touching I will have a problem so f we start at one just like in PHP and then we say the star until it's smaller equal to five basically star plus plus and so that's going to be done five times and if we say if the star is smaller or equal to the rating that we have in our JSON and then actually is it rating or dollar sign rating it's dollar sign rating right so dollar sign rating and then if not okay so basically now if the star is smaller it means you got the rating so JSON I and then we create the variable dynamically by saying dollar sign rating plus star oops I didn't do plus plus star and then is equal to an empty string and then here we say is equal to dash empty okay so we create these variables rating one two three four five and we say it's either empty uh, as an empty string or dash empty to make the star look like it didn't get the rating okay and then I, I don't know if you remember as well we have the size okay that I keep adding everywhere so it's gonna be important to tell it what size so Jason I and this doesn't exist inside the array so um, the size variable is present in the PHP but not on the object and we'll just say is equal to four okay so now basically we have all the components that we need and, and the whole job is dealt with by the uh, template there so let's just find out why we're not getting the, uh, the template to work let me see here uh, and then by the way this is generating our HTML but we're not adding it yet right so we still need to add it to the page so uh, let's actually refresh here okay so you, it seems to oh no that's the JSON sorry about that so pages view so we still got the unexpected token problem there by the way when I was testing I had this problem um, so I know that it's possible to fix I can actually go and look at the finished product here and just go and look inside the um, the JavaScript file that I had made that was working so you can see this is my template uh, interpolate and you can see this is my test so you can see with those special variables it works okay so um, the question is why isn't it working now so uh, we'll find out if I copy this and bring it over to the other one template settings dot interpolate oh you know what I think is the problem probably it says unexpected token in the uh, HTML and um, if I go if I go um, inside my footer okay I'm loading my main okay just making sure and then um, if I go to my home page again let's actually see because I know I had left the type there maybe the type actually forces it to um, not read it as JavaScript maybe who knows 
Yay. So that was the fix. So you can see here as I have my line break over the code, let's have a quick look at this HTML variable, but it's at the beginning, so it's still empty. So uh, let's actually put a line break there. Oh, it's just about to add it, so uh, maybe uh, keep going once more. And then you can see here, uh, oops, sorry. You can see here, oh, it's actually a very large string, but you can see, oh man, can you guys actually see that the data is filled in to my HTML, right? Just like we would have wanted to do it with concatenations and strings and so forth. So all we need to do now is all that nice generated HTML, we need to find a way to add it to the page. And then again, you know, I didn't want to go on my home page and create a special container. So I said to myself, there should be a way that I could find example, wherever the destin the location of the script is, that's where I want to add it. So I said to myself, well, instead of finding the HTML and storing it right away, what we can do is just um, create a variable for the script that we have. And then that's the destination item. And then basically that that particular script, we can get its HTML. So that's kind of basically the same. But the difference is that we have the script as well uh, as an element to reference. And so when we're done doing that loop, what we can do is say, you know, wherever the script is, go to its parent. And then before whatever is inside of the container, prepend the HTML that you've generated. So if I upload this file and then take off the line break so we don't have this particular code anymore, you can see I get all my stuff and my images obviously are not loaded. And the reason is it starts with images and we're inside of page view. So the quick fix for that is to go inside the destination template and to put a forward slash in front so it always starts referencing the images from the root of the site now did i upload this correctly control shift u no okay wait i need it to save the file first and then refresh okay so now you can see these are loaded in via ajax so how wonderful is that um so the next thing the next thing was to create a button on the home page for RSS. So first of all, we need to customize our UI. I'd like to put the button here. And so simply what we are going to do is we're going to go inside our header, locate our nav bar, and then right here, we're gonna create the necessary container. And so basically what that container does is it aligns things to the right. So we create a div class and then it's called um, nav bar. And then for this, you need to search um, the things on the on the bootstrap nav bar. Oops, sorry, nav bar right. So if you Google uh, that on the on the um, co uh, bootstrap, sorry, you'll find that this is the way that bootstrap wants you to align things to the right in the nav bar. Now what I'm going to do to do is create a simple link uh, as a button. So class uh, btn and then um, I'm going to make it small. So btn uh, extra small, oops, dash extra small. And then I'm going to make this uh, a nav bar btn. Okay. So um, Inside of it, I'm just gonna say RSS, and then I'm gonna upload this and show you what it does. So you can see now I have a link here. Now, in order for me to turn this into, I thought I said it to be a button, I can give it a button style. And if I went through the button styles and button warning has uh, the orange color. So I thought to myself, how, how nice, looks like RSS. And then to even go a bit beyond, I said to myself, well, while we're at it, why not add an icon uh, from uh, the, um, the tool that I used here. So I've included this for the, for the little plane that's there, but uh, it's the FA, the font awesome. 
and then the FA-RSS. So there's an icon for that. Okay, so you can see now I have my RSS button there. Now the RSS is going to link to something. So href and that something is going to be probably something like destinations slash XML, right? So all we need to do now is to have another version of the JSON collection that outputs XML. So what we're going to do, we're going to create a new file. We're going to call it XML collection dot PHP. If anybody needs to go, just don't make too much noise and you can go. Okay, so XML collection. So now we're just going to grab whatever we have here in our JSON collection. We're just going to paste it here. And we're going to essentially walk our way through changing these tags. Now, I know I've made this earlier. So here's what I'm going to do to speed up this. I'm just going to go and grab the code for it. So this is what the code looks like. Okay, so I output XML version one. Then I output, I decided to call it results because it's a collection. And then each item, and basically each item comes inside its own field name. And I encode the UTF-8. So now all we need to do is to go inside our destination controller and then copy the JSON function, call it XML. We still get all of our destination, but we change the utils JSON collection to the XML JSON collection and we upload the collection. And then uh, if I'm correct, I think uh, I added something else. But anyways, I think this should work. There's really nothing else. I don't think there's really anything else. So destination slash XML. And then see, we get the XML of the destination. OK, so now this is going to be useful later on in order for us to create what will consume the data in XML. Now, the next big part is the function RSS. OK, so now this one here. Uh, is a bit more difficult because uh, it, it requires us to understand that how RSS feeds are structured. So if you Google RSS feed, you'll find the article on Wikipedia and it basically gives you an example of an RSS feed. So you see you need the XML version 1.0 encoding UTF-8. You need the RSS version 2.0. You need to open a channel and then your channel has a title, a description, a link a published date, a, a time to live, and then basically each item in your feed is in inside its own item, and its own item have each a title, a description, a link. So you need to basically have this. And what I did was that I said, okay, I'm going to create now a RSS feed. Oops, sorry. An RSS feed dot PHP. And then basically inside of this, what I did is I just pasted the code. Now, whenever you have a question mark dollar sign, this is an instruction to the parser. It's inside a PHP file. So I didn't necessarily want to struggle with, you know, playing with how to escape this properly. So I just removed it. Okay. And you'll see what I do with it later on. I just decide to echo this before I call the view. So that's simple. That's my simple fix for that. So now I have my RSS, my channel. And as I've shown earlier, there is what we called the uh, template parser class in which you could just put different entities inside of it. So what I did is I went ahead and created the different entities. So blog title, blog description, blog link, last build date, blog publish date, time to live, link self, and then here I have the items and you can see items has a nest and it surrounds it with a closing tag. And if you read here, you see that those closing tags and how they work, uh, variable pairs. And you can see you just need to create an array of results, you see. And so now you can get it to repeat. So that's pretty cool now. So the idea is once we have this going, that's our template for the RSS feed. So we need to create a view that's going to give us our data. Now, 
Think about this. Are any of our fields in our database named blog title or title for the for the for this? No. And so that's why it's a bit challenging. And I find that the best way and the most effective way to play with this is that we can just give the results of our query to the database straight to our items. So I'm going to start building what I did here. So I remember doing this. Um, I remember building the data for the template just so how you know how to use it. So it's data and then you could set it to an array. So I basically copied this part here. Data is equal to array, you know, and I also used blog title. You can see why I was uh, I was doing it with there. And so uh, I wrote a blog title and all that. So you can see that's kind of that's kind of what I made here blog title, hot destination, blog description. I was waiting to put in the link. I use base URL. So if I need base URL, what do I need to load? This load helper URL. Okay. So this is going to give me my helper. Now, I don't know if you notice here again on this site, uh, in order for us to use this, we need to say this load library parser in order to use the, the template. So I'm going to load this. So now this is going to replace a lot of them, but not all of them. Okay. So if I, if I close the array here and I, I'm going to load now the template and the way you do this is you say this parser, right? Cause that's again, you know, that's from this code, this parser parse this parser parse. Now, this is the name of the view. My view is inside utils slash RSS feed dot PHP. Well, not dot PHP because it's a view. And then we just give it the data, right? So if if you look at this now, uh, and we go to here, we could say destination slash RSS call to undefined function RSS date. Yes. Okay. That was the other thing too. I wanted a date in RSS. And so what I did is I created a function. I made it private so that you wouldn't be able to call it from the outside. And I called it RSS date. And that's just because I went on the internet. Why did I create a function? Because I'm using it twice. <laughs> and that's the, really the only reason. So function RSS date. And then all I did was um, I created a, um, actually I could copy it probably from here and then you can look at the code. It's very simple. I think I got it off the PHP site uh, and then just kind of tweaked it a bit. So basically there's a format that you can use. This is the default date function. Okay. By the way, I could have just done this and that would have been native PHP there. I would not have even needed the the special function that I made um, because I'm not using any timestamp. I was thinking too much. You see, I was thinking, what if, you know, I have an actual timestamp in the database when this feed was created, but that was a bit too much. This would be good enough in order to create the date in the RSS format. And that's native PHP code. So if we refresh this, an error was encountered. Yes, I didn't upload the RSS feed. So I'm just going to upload it now. And then you could see view page source. We got the RSS channel. Anybody notice that there's something missing at the top? Yes, that particular um, instruction to the parser. So we need to add it. Echo um, question mark XML version is equal to 1.0. Encoding is equal to UTF eight and then that's the instruction now it's very important that you add a line break after the instruction so that it doesn't touch the rest of the code so it's backslash n so control shift u and then if we refresh here you can see now this line is there and you can see hot destination has been replaced we have our date that was built and then we have a lot of our information here but no items right so now the question is how do i get the items in there so i could say that the items will be actually it needs to be inside a string i'm going a bit fast now i'm trying to finish this the items 
are going to be an array, right? And so now I thought about this. If I look at what I get when I say get destination, I basically get all the results back to me, but they're like named after the fields in my database. You know what I mean, right? So the idea now is that I, th I said to myself, it would be too intensive on the processing for the PHP to go over each of these results and start changing a format, create another array where all the items have names like title and description. So I said to myself, that would be a great job for the model. So I go inside the model and then I decide, th wait, I decide inside the model to call a function public uh, function. I just called it um, get RSS uh, destination, right? So, oops. So get RSS destination. So now basically, we can build a query, and then essentially in our query, we're going to. Um, control what we actually use um, and this is a bit how it's going to look I read on the select statement um, that code igniter has and basically before you execute a query you can say select and then you can actually start writing the kind of select that you would want to create so example one a quick example before I copy paste the code I said concat so bring together um, the field uh, city, right? And then put, let's say, a physical comma with a space, and then put the country, OK? And then basically start adding uh, a dash with the physical dollar sign and then to that add the price from the database so that's some some pretty nice query there and I say as and then call it title so each item now is going to be returned as a MySQL result and one of the field is going to be called title, but it's going to have all of these fields inside of a generated string. And I don't know if I kept Internet Explorer open, uh, but if I look at the original code here and click on RSS and show you this in Internet Explorer again, just so you get a grasp of really what I did with this with this RSS feed. See Paris comma France dash dollar sign forty two hundred. Okay, and that comes from this concatenation. And so I can put the rest of the code up basically where I build this query. And then the idea with select is that you say false so that it doesn't add anything to it. So the other thing I needed is I used the base URL in order to get my slugs right. Uh, so uh, the link of the item needs to have something for the slug appended to them. So again, if I use base URL, what do I need? The helper. Okay, so now in order for me to run this query and get the results, I basically call the particular table that I want the results out of. So select from destinations and then return the get into the query and return it as an array. So now this is how my destination controller can look. I can actually close this view. I could say the items are equal to this, basically destination model, get RSS destination. And they come out of the database pre-formatted. Uh, what's the error here? Oh, the, the symbol at the end. Okay, so example, if I come here and now if I look at the generated code, you can see now that I get each item replaced in the template with the values <clears throat> concatenated to each other. And that's how I did the RSS. So now, example, if I add the link to our homepage, 
oops, uh, sorry, the home page is pages slash view. And I could essentially replace that later on using routes, but if I click RSS, you can see now I have, oh wait, that's XML. I need to go uh, inside my header. And then I need to change this to RSS. Okay, so uh, back, refresh, RSS. So we got that. Now, the next one is we need to search. Okay, so what we're going to do is inside the home page, I'm going to add the search form in the sidebar, which I had done earlier, but I had removed. So I kept my code here that I did for my search form. And then you could see. Um, what it's going to add. So now what I say to this is that, okay, you have a form and then the action of the form should lead to destination slash search. Okay. And then that's a function that we're going to create inside of our view, uh, inside of our controller. So if we go here, this should correspond to a function called search. So function search. Okay. And then this one is going to be special because we're going to actually ask a queue to find stuff related to that search. Okay. And so now in order for us to do that search, we're basically going to display the results the same way as we did in our index. The only thing that's going to change is how we get our data. Okay. So if we look here inside our destination model, what we can do is we can create a function in our model called search destinations and then obviously we'll give it our queue so it knows what to find so let's go inside our model and let's create that function so public function search destinations destinations okay and then it's getting our queue here so now we can actually build a query that's going to allow us to search inside the database. Now, uh, there's some pretty good example, but essentially it's very simple once you understand how the select works because, oops, what did I do now? Okay, so once you understand how the select work, you can say this uh, database and then select. And then you can say, I want all of the fields, right? And now you could say in which table? Well, example, I want this database from. So select all the fields from destinations. And then that's where it becomes interesting because you can say this database and then find something like where, for instance, one of my fields, country. And then would be similar or somewhat similar to my queue. Okay. And so now this will fetch results that, and then you can actually keep going like this and create stuff like, or like, or like the city would be like my queue. And then I could just keep going or like the name of my destination be like my queue. And then I'm going to add also the full description. So, or like the full description contains a word that I'm looking for. And then now I can run my query. So the query is equal to this database get. And then I'm just going to return the results. Return query. results array okay so this is my search destination so now you have to look at something here so if we say let's look at the HTML that we created here oops that's not it so if we look at the HTML that's inside our home page so we can see that we created a form that directs the users to search we can actually test it out by refreshing this page and trying to type one, two, three in it. And then we can see that we get an error because it says that we're missing an argument. We need a parameter for searching. Okay. So 
The first thing I do is always try to remove the errors. So I'll go inside my controller and I'll just set the queue to null by default so that this way it doesn't give me the parameter or the error. But then I can't call because now I'm getting null. Okay. So the idea here is to say, what am I actually getting? And you can see the reason is I'm not actually searching for anything because I would need to write one, two, three here. Okay. Uh, why am I not getting it? Destination, new results array. Did I make a mistake with results array? Yes. It's not results array. It's result array, singular. Um, so inside my model, result array. And it was pretty obvious here that the function is undefined. And then we can see here that it gets whatever I'm looking for, uh, Paris, for instance. Okay. So the question is, once I click on my home page, which is uh, page slash view, and I write uh, new here, why can't I get the right search results? Okay. And the reason why I can't get the search results is because it doesn't understand the query parameters. Okay. So there's one thing that I can do is I could say, okay, well, I want to make it understand the query parameters. So I could say, okay, well, if the queue is empty, so is equal, equal to null, then you're going to have to find another way to do it. Actually, or if it's not null, you can use this code here. Okay. And then if not, what you can do is trying to get the results, but using dollar sign underscore get. Now I find this method to be rather unsafe. Uh, you could always put an if is set, you know, else if is set dollar sign underscore get q and dollar sign underscore get use not empty you know you could say this like that and essentially if I refresh now I get the one that's New York okay that's using the default settings but there's a better way to do this the way is to say how can we use code igniters default behavior so it would be slash new instead so what I did is I went inside of my um, my uh, main.js and I created a simple function that looks at my form. So example, my form, uh, if I go back to the home page, is called search. So I say the ID search on submit. And then basically what function am I going to call when I submit? And then basically I'm going to get the E dot prevent defaults so that it doesn't actually submit alert test. So let's actually see how this works. If we go back to our home page, refresh, if we click one, two, three, you can see it says test, but it doesn't leave the page. Right, so it's calling my function, but it doesn't leave the page. So what we're going to do is we're simply going to ourselves control the location. Window dot location dot href is equal to, and then here's a little trick. I actually I'm going to use this attribute action because it already contains where I want to go, and essentially on top of the action, I'm just going to add the value of the queue. So this queue, it's actually the ID queue dot val. So now what this is going to do, if I refresh if, and I say example, look for new, it's going to actually send it to search slash new. Search slash Paris, search slash Paris, and then we get our results. So now that's that's pretty cool. So the next part is we're going to actually just do something really quick here and say, now I'd like to, and that's one of the extra things that I decided to do. Uh, you're not necessarily required to do it, but it's very simple in how you could see 
that you can get all these different results just by saying, well, look at this. Um, we can create a switch on something like the format. And then this is the default. And then we can break here. And then we can add a second parameter and say format and then set it to null again. So that way if you don't pass it, there's no problem. And then we could create a case for example, Jason and then break. And then what do we need to return if we want JSON? This load view JSON collection. So now if I search for Paris, but I say I want it in JSON, see I get only one item for Paris. I could do the same and I could say I want XML as well. So give me JSON, but also give me XML. And so I can load the XML collection. Refresh, and I could say give me some XML. So now I have the Paris, and I could say if I want New York, I could search for something like New York. And if there was more than one thing that could match, like example, I don't know, best, so there's nothing with best. Um, hotel, I don't know if there's anything, no. But anyways, for now, this works. Let's say first, I don't know if this one will work first. Yeah, so you can see like there's two of them that have the word first in their description. And you can see I'm getting the results in XML. I'm getting the results in HTML. And I'm getting the results in JSON out of my search. So that's my search uh, function here. All I need to do now in order to complete this demo is I need to create one other page in which I use PHP to consume the information. So how am I going to do this? Well, very simple. I already have the home page, so I'm going to create another page. So new file about.php. Now, if I remove everything from that page and then upload it, I could say that the pages slash view slash about is just going to give me my header and footer, but nothing in the middle. So now, um, I said to you guys, I want something like a sidebar. So I'm just going to use the same as the home page, but I'm going to remove the carousel out of there. Okay. And then uh, I'm going to remove the Ajax stuff out of there. And then uh, I'm going to remove the search form. Okay. And so if I refresh, you can see I only have this and I'm going to put my destination in the sidebar there. Now, I don't know if you guys remember, but to get my template, all I needed to do was to include the pieces. Okay. But in order to do that, I'm going to need to call upon the data. So if you read online and if you Googled my hint, you probably found that there's something inside PHP called simple XML load file. Okay, and you can see it's native PHP. And then I can load basically my file, which is, you know, my base URL plus uh, destination slash search. I'm using actually my search. Uh, slash new to look for the one that says New York and then return it as XML. Okay, so I'm kind of doing extra stuff there. And then uh, this is going to give me the XML object in PHP that I can use. And simply put, I can retrieve data. So example, if I wanted the thumbnail, I could say create the thumbnail, T-H-U-M-B, and it's, that's gonna be equal to the XML uh, inside the XML, the item, and inside the item, the thumb value. And I could do that for a lot of fields, which basically would equal to uh, something like this. Okay. I could set my size as well for my columns. And then guess what I did for the rating? I could have done a loop, 
but I just wanted to show you also that it's very easy to do it linear. So I just say if the rating I have uh, inside my XML, so I store my rating as a variable, so it's a bit shorter. And if it's more than one, I leave it empty or put it to the class. And I just do that for four variables. And now I have all the variables I need to just include. And then I need to include my file, which is uh, application. Uh, it's application. Application slash views slash. Um, sorry, slash templates slash destination dot PHP. Okay, so that actually includes uh, the template again that I did. And if I refresh, you can see it takes a bit longer because it's going to fetch the data, get them back, process them. Hopefully it's not going to throw some kind of an error, but it's always possible. But you can see, you know, it actually returned my data into the source code of the page. You can see New York City was printed there by PHP. Okay, and the, all the extras have been done as well because we also used um, the underscore templates. Okay, so later on we're probably going to just put a file up and describe everything and how we can use the different views and functions and describe how we use our API. But this is basically a complete API that that allows you to format the data out of the database in different ways. I hope you uh, enjoyed this tutorial. It's uh it's very